and welcome to episode 25 of the Sheep and Cheerful podcast. My name is Nikki, I am the host and CEO of All Things Sheep and Cheerful and this is a podcast about living as a creative a life as I can in my little part of the world here, um, in as happy and cheerful a way as I can. So pull up a chair, pull up a chair, where's it going to be? Um, throwing myself now. So yes, uh, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever is your preferred um, tipple and join me for a slightly shorter version than last week. Last week was a little bit epic for me, even for me. <laughs> um, I realised it's actually, the podcast was about an hour and three quarters, which is longer than most of the Hallmark Christmas movies that I've been watching this last week. <laughs> and it was all a monologue. My goodness. Oh, I feel for you guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, it should be hashtag sorry not sorry, isn't it? Because I enjoy chatting. Let's face it, let's just, let's just put that out there. I love chatting. So, you know, if you want um, uh, the length of a Hallmark Christmas movie, not as long, as I said in my Instagram post today, as the um, extended version of The Lord of the Rings, <laughs> which is like 17 hours long. <laughs> um, although, I have to say, if I had Aragorn sitting next to me, I'd be quite happy. Anyway, oh my goodness, enough of that. Uh, so, where was I? What was I saying? Yes, it's Wednesday the 11th of November today, so it is Remembrance Day. And there has been, I think, definitely in the UK, possibly across the world, I'm not sure to be honest. But here in the UK we have, I think yesterday was Veterans Day, wasn't it? In the USA, I think. I apologise if I'm getting that wrong, but I seem to recall that was that. Today's... Um, our version and at 11am we had a two minute silence in remembrance of all those who have um, given their lives really um, to preserve the freedoms that we enjoy today. Anyhow, you will be watching this after the 11th, so what's the next thing before Christmas? Oh, there's nothing, it's Christmas. Well, in the USA of course, um, you'll be heading towards Thanksgiving on the it's the last Thursday isn't it in November and I didn't check the date I want to say the 27th but I think that might have been last year I don't know if it's the same date so it's the Thursday isn't it I will know by next time so in any event I've totally lost my thread now what was I saying yes I am in the south coast on the south coast of the United Kingdom I live, as most of you probably know, with my family, husband, two grown-up children, and two dogs. Now, I have to say, for those of you who are Henry fans, you're going to be disappointed. Henry's having a bit of a strop with me at the moment. I'm not quite sure what his problem is, but basically, he's he's been a bit sulky. So last night... Gary went to bed early, he was feeling poorly. Um, I went and sat in the lounge, got my knitting, and thought I'll watch, again, a Christmas movie. I thought I will sit on the settee. I don't normally sit on the settee because my back issues, I have what we fondly call a granny chair, and um, which is a more supported upright chair. It's nice, but you know, it's not a lovely, snuggly, cuddle-uppy settee. But I thought last night, do you know what? My back's okay at the moment. I will sit on the settee. It's a two-seater, so Henry can come and cuddle. Honey sits on the settee across from us because she likes to stretch. <laughs> she likes to stretch out. She's a settee hog. And I thought it will be great. So in a go, knitting, film on. Henry came in, got on for two minutes, got off, walked out, and went and curled up in the kitchen. I was a little bit gutted, I have to say. So, I got over that. You get over it, don't you? I thought, no, if he wants to be like that, that's fine. So now, I've come in here, he came in here. But then he turned out, he's gone out again. He's gone and curled up in the lounge now. And i tell you why that is, because you really want to know. <laughs> Honey is currently in here. 
and they don't like, Henry doesn't like sharing his space with honey. He's got worse over the years. She will curl up with him quite happily, but he, no mate, no. And she's on the armchair by the window. She's actually, she's, she's sitting astride the arm looking out the window and she's got her back legs dropped down over like she's on a horse. I would turn the camera around, but it'd be way too much hassle because you don't know how long it took me to get you set up there. Anyway, so Honey's in here. So, and I think Henry is fast asleep in the other room. So you may have to go without your dose of Henry and Honey this week. Oh my goodness, what a load of old waffle. Do I say anything else? Ah, oh, yes. I, my uh, Instagram handle is Clara Pegarty. And you can find me under that on Instagram and Ravelry. And of course, we have a Ravelry podcast group. A podcast group on Ravelry. It's going so well today. Um, which you can, you are more than welcome to join in. We have a few make-alongs going on. We have an ongoing Scrappy Blanket Adventures thing going on that, oh, I'm doing it jointly with Cherie from Ollie and Bella. And we keep saying we're going to pull um, a random draw of a winner. And I still haven't done it. I'm going to do it for next week. And we will draw from the chatter thread for next week, I think. And because this has been going on, I'm going to make a note of it. Um, here we go. Prize from... And we will get one of the prizes drawn. Because although we said end of the year, I think it's probably, it is going to go on past the end of the year. Partly because obviously we're all working on second and third blankets so it's just nice to share those patterns we also have our christmas bauble along going on and now things are hotting up a little bit there's a few people posting on instagram now using the hashtag christmas bauble along and you can either use uh, christmas bauble along or christmas bauble along fo if you don't want to post on ravelry and then when i draw the prize that finishes on december the 12th so when I draw from the finished objects thread, I will be, I'll draw, I'll include the, oh for goodness sake, I'll include the Instagram posts as well. So the rules are to make a small item that you can hang on your Christmas tree. It doesn't have to be a bauble. We had um, a couple of birds posted on Instagram today, little birds that you can hang on your Christmas tree. As you know, I've done a mini sweater and I have done a bauble myself. And, you know, there are various advent stockings, little, you know, the mini, oh, the amazing mini advent stockings you can knit. So all of those things, anything you can hang on your Christmas tree, doesn't have to be knitted. It can be sewn or crocheted or um, embroidered, anything like that. Um, do put it into the Christmas bauble along and we can enjoy seeing each other's festive decorations. Okay, so that's the Ravelry group. I think that's probably most of the waffle. You'll be pleased to know. So we'll move on to some knitting. I'm sure there's other stuff I wanted to talk to you about. I'm a bit discombobulated today, more than usual. So apologies for that. And I'm a bit nervous because I read somebody, not on this podcast, I have to say, because you're all lovely anyway, but somebody left a really harsh comment on another person's podcast this week that I saw and I thought oh that's a little bit harsh and now I'm thinking now it's making me kind of nervy that I'm gonna be like that but I don't think no no forget that let's move on right because you're lovely and if you're not and if you're not enjoying it please just switch off <laughs> please don't leave a horrible comment I have a finished object I have a couple of finished objects. I have one knitted finished object, which isn't anything new. It's what you've seen before, but now we're finished. Are you ready? Ta-da! I have finished the Another Blooming Christmas Christmas socks. Okay, stop. And I will get comments about that, and I? Here you go. As you know by now, my favourite, favourite yarn by Debbie from Down Sheepy Lane. I should have checked. I meant to check whether she had any more left. She did re-dye this for us this year because this was two years old, this colourway. I said, Deb, 
Deb, you've got to dye some more. So she did. I don't know if there's any left in the shop. I know quite a few of you managed to snag a skein, but it's just, and this is based on, for those of you who don't know, the uh, Raymond Briggs Father Christmas book come movie or short film, the animated one that we watch in our house every Christmas Eve. That's one of our traditions. And we sing along Another Blooming Christmas. That's his Grumpy Santa's song. So these are now finished, they're blocked. Uh, my usual um, socks, so I did um, two by two rib there. I do about 15 rounds usually, or about an inch. Then straight down, I do a fish lips kiss heel there. That was just some West Yorkshire spinners red that I had. Then plain down the foot, and with these I did a standard wedge toe. So nothing particularly different about these. So there you go, another blooming Christmas, another blooming pair of socks off the needles. I was watching Helen of Giddy Yarns yesterday and she was saying that through the year she puts her socks into a box or into a little cubby and uh, doesn't get them out again until December the 1st and then she opens up and opens the cubby and remembers and sees all the socks she's made throughout the year and that's exactly what I do I have a box and I forget I forget what I've knit back in January I forget what I knit last week let's face it but you know <laughs> um, so these will be well they might not make it into the box because 1st of December isn't that far away is it they might not even get put away. They'll probably just sit laying around on my desk unless I need the sock blockers. So, um, so yeah, I thought I might do a, a sock review when I get my socks out from the year and we can have a look and see what I've actually achieved in terms of socks. I have had, oh, I've been splurging on Christmas sock yarn this year. I didn't, I didn't buy much at all last year in yarn or Christmas yarn, certainly not Christmas yarn. But suddenly this year, for some reason, the way things have played out, I've been throwing caution to the wind and I've got quite a few Christmas colorways. I'm just looking to see, I've got some self-striping and I have been really cheeky and ordered some Christmas yarn from the USA, which I don't do. First time this year, I've ordered yarn from the USA and I thought no I'll do it I'll put aside the um, the VAT and the import tax that I'm bound to get nobbled for um, and that will be part of it and that's my treat so I will share it with you when it comes right mm. we have to hope that I've got my sock mojo back by then I also apologise if I sound a little bit nasally, a bit bunged up. I have been fighting a cold. It is just a cold. It's nothing major, but um, it's enough to make me a bit sniffy. And I know the last thing people want is someone sniffing in their face on a YouTube video. So I will try very hard not to. I might have to just stop the video. So we... <laughs> you really don't need to hear any of this, do you? Okay, moving on. La la. But now, do you remember last week I showed you the high point hat, the little baby elf Santa hat. I've got it here because I love it so much. This was my FO last week. And in fact, I put it on Instagram yesterday. Yesterday, tomorrow. So today, yeah. <laughs> um, and I loved it so much. And I don't know if you remember originally, I had planned to knit one of these for baby Regan. And if I had a chance, one for his mum, Jordan, um, who loves hats and she's all about wearing matching hats with her little boy. Obviously, once he's 16, I'm guessing he won't want to do that. <laughs> but at two years old, it's okay, isn't it? So I wanted, but I didn't want to knit another fingering weight one because although that knit up really quickly, amazingly quickly, actually, um, I wanted to do a double knit. So I ordered some... Cascade 220, a worsted weight, isn't it? Cascade 220 in a really nice red. Let's find the red. So again, oh, that's blowing out. That's looking pinker than it is. Um, yeah, that's not so good. Also, 
um, sidebar here. I'm back in the craft room this week. Last week I uh, recorded in the kitchen because I thought the light would be better and we wouldn't, I wouldn't have to have the inside lights, you know, inside lights, the normal lights on. Um, but this week, apart from the fact Gary's at home working, it's just so much easier in here because I've got everything around me. Um, so I may have to buy one of those ring lights to get the lighting better, but we'll see. As I said last, I don't want to. I don't want to buy more clutter unless it's yarn. So anyway, this is Cascade 220. I suppose I could tell you what colour it is. That would help, wouldn't it? I could. If I, there it is. Okay, this is colour 8414. That's so helpful, isn't it? 8414 in the Cascade 220. Anyway, and this is how far I've got. And it keeps falling off the needles because I'm on quite a short cable. Again, it's looking a little bit pink, so let's move that water. Um, it's not, it's lovely red. It's a brilliant pillar box red. Um, and you'll see we've got the rolled brim and I'm actually up now to start the decreases. I'm at the point, sort of, yeah, to start the decreases. Um, so what I did, because the pattern is written for fingering weight yarn, I basically had a look at my other hat patterns to get an idea of how much it cost on it. My concern was that um, this obviously doesn't have a rib and I didn't want it to be huge. It's going to be quite stretchy. I'd put it on my head but it will come off the needles. Um, so I looked up and saw the stitches for other rolled brim hats, so other free patterns on Ravelry. and. Pretty much they were all unanimously, it seemed to be 90 stitches if you're using a worsted weight or a DK weight yarn. And I'm using um, 4.5 millimetre needles. So I'm basically cast on 90 stitches, knitting up to, um, it's a free pattern this, so that's all right, up, up to five and three quarter inches, which is pretty much um, the same as the baby hat. And then I'm going to do the decreases the same. Um, so it should work out okay. I knit this, I cast this on last night. As I say, Gary had gone to bed and I thought it was about eight o'clock and I thought it'd be really nice just to sit and knit on something. So this is why I'm not knitting socks because I've got things like this, not stockinette to knit, um, or my log cabin blanket. So um, yeah, so I worked on that. So I'm really loving that and the measurement should be all right. I've got the measurement of Jordan's head. Um, she, like myself and Hannah, has quite a big head. So um, I think that'll be fine. So I think tonight it might be another Christmas movie and that'll get finished, which would be really great. Really lovely. So that's, yeah, and that is actually, I have a new bag, which I didn't show you. Oh, I don't think I brought it in the card, darn it. This is from Jilly Makes. I bought this. It's a bucket bag, so it's got no handle. I might actually put a loop on it for a handle. But look at that. I couldn't resist it. I mean, I'm making project bags for myself for Christmas and all of that. But do you know, I saw this and I loved it. And I do love bucket. I do love a bucket bag. So it's got that lovely Christmas pudding sort of um, minty aqua lining. It does, you can turn it up, but obviously it's much nicer down. And it's really spacious. It's really big in there. I mean, I've got the hat in there, but it could take, I mean, that could be quite a good scrappy blanket starter bucket bag, because you could get plenty of scrappy blankets. Uh, yeah, you could get about six scrappy blankets <laughs> Scrappy balls, scrappy yarn balls in there. So that's Jilly Makes. Um, oh, she's got a little, can't notice that. It's a little sort of cork tag. Look, can you see that? Hopefully you can. And she's on Etsy and Instagram. And yeah, she's a very nice lady. From, from our few Instagram chats we've had. 
so yeah that's that's where the hat is living because it's easy then that can sit by the side of my chair in the lounge my granny chair okay so that was that uh, right let's go on to another bit of knitting if you remember last week I had cast on the wherefore art thou sweater which was a pattern from Pearl Soho, another Pearl Soho pattern. This isn't a free pattern though, this is one that was written by Nora Gorn for Pearl Soho. And I'll show you quickly, I think I did the front page in colour. Did I? Did I do the front page? Yes I did. So it's that sweater and I just love these, I think called bishop sleeves, I think they're called bishop sleeves, these big puffy sleeves and I cast that on on the 29th of October and progress is okay, not as fast as I would have liked because I'm so crazy making and knitting Christmas gifts and birthday items that uh, I'm not actually doing an awful lot of my own stuff but I have made progress And I am over halfway now um, of the, the top. Now, let me see if I can find it. Put it the right way. The trouble is the sleeves are kind of as wide as the, the front and back pieces at the moment. They're all a similar size. There you go. So, a bit closer. It's like a... I said last week, didn't I? Oh, is that, is that doing to my face? Look, I'm going really bright. Put it over there, that's better. Um, this is, can you see this lovely design feature on the raglan increases? Uh, here we go. One of these days, I say this every week, I'll get that right. It's got this lovely, really simple pattern, either side, front and back, on those raglan um, increases. So I'm halfway through which is amazing Dan so you know hoping next week I might have split for the sleeves. So this yarn is Malabrigo Washted which is a worsted so it's washed head um, as in W-A-S-H-T-E-D I'm not just pronouncing worsted in a funny way um, and it is their cowboy colourway as we discussed last week but look at all the Look at all the variety in that. I mean, it's mostly, it's coming out again a bit brighter than it is, but it's such a rich palette of colors. It really is. Um, I am actually, show you that side as well. It's gonna be amazing, this. Well, I think so anyway. And I'll tell you what I've learned doing this because with Malabrigo, it's fairly, um, well, with indie dye yarn, you should alternate skeins really when you're making a garment because no two skeins can be the same. And you might end up getting some pooling or some, you know, whole shade variation. Um, that's just hazard of the job, hazard of working with hand dyed yarn. Um, Malabrigo are the same, Malabrigo yarn. I believe it is all hand dyed. Did I say that last week? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, their skeins often vary quite a lot um, in the skein. Their skeins in the skein. So although these were all the same dye lot, they're gonna vary um, because different skeins pick up different bits of yarn. You know, it's a bit like people were all a bit different. So I decided, I knew I had to alternate skeins and I don't like alternating. And a few people I've, I'm friends with um, had talked about helical knitting, helical knitting, and where it allegedly made it easier to alternate skeins and you don't get that line down either the back or the side of the sweater where you're, where you're swapping from one skein to another. Um, so I thought, well, I'll check that out. And do you know what? It's brilliant. It is so good. I really, really commend it to you. It's very easy. It's much easier to watch it or to do it when you're watching a, a tutorial. So I recommend you find a tutorial to watch. 
um, on YouTube, there's plenty. Um, but basically where, and again, whether I can make this straightforward or not is another matter. Um, so let's say that's the beginning of the round there, here. Um, so what you would do is you would knit to three stitches before the beginning of the round with colour one. Then you drop colour one, you slip the next three stitches, so you don't knit them, you don't work them at all, you just slip them across to your right hand needle. You then, oh, yeah, to your right hand needle. Um, you then pick up and work with colour two, and you go all the way round with colour two, until you get to three stitches before where you've dropped colour one and you then drop colour two, you slide three stitches across, you don't work them, and then you'll find that the next working stitch is the one attached to colour one, and you knit that round. So you're actually moving around, you're doing three stitches ahead each time as you go around. And it just means basically that um, there's no one place where the, the yarn changing is focused. You're actually changing uh, skeins at a different point on every round and it means that there's no you don't get any of those lines at the back you don't have to twist your yarn or cross it over you literally just pick it up from where you left it on the previous round knit around to three stitches before drop that slip the next three pick up the new one and honestly it's really worth doing it really is so um, I say it really is there's no rules, are there? I mean, if you're quite happy doing, you know, knitting to the beginning of the round and then picking up the other one, twisting it round and knitting around, that's absolutely fine too. It's just that I think with um, with some yarns and with some sweaters, depending, I mean, this one is so variegated, you probably wouldn't see it. But if you've got a plainish, um, a, a consistent colour or a pale colour, you get to see that little, I made, um, a pavement sweater a few years back and I don't know if you remember everybody was making them at the time Vera Valimaki pattern and it was fingering weight and it was big and you had to you know if you used indie dye yarn you would you would um, alternate skeins and yeah I think a lot of people had the problem that where they were alternating skeins they had just the tiniest little line and again most people probably wouldn't notice it but as knitters we tend to notice these things don't we um, in our own work in particular but um, I would suggest you know helical knitting is a bit of a revelation so yeah this is my wherefore art thou as I say it's a pattern by Pearl Soho uh, by Nora Gorn for Pearl Soho and that's coming on so and I was hoping to get it knit by the end of November Need to get a move on, don't I? Get a shake on if I'm going to get that done, because I have talked to you about some yarn I'm expecting for my next project that was going to be my Christmas cast on, and I said I think I said last week um, it was somewhere between here and California. My lovely dear friend Deborah, who is um, one half of the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast, uh, with her sister Emily, and also the dye behind Candy Shop Yarns and the beautiful bag making bits of obs. In fact, Deborah turns her hand to so many beautiful things. She's not um, dyeing yarn anymore big time, but when she feels like it, she has a little bit of a yarn dyeing session. So if you can get your hands on that yarn, I'd go for it. It's just beautiful. Anyway, I was fortunate enough, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to call Deborah my friend, which is lovely. And we agreed that she would dye me some yarn to knit a cardigan. Uh, the Dotty Cardigan by Poison Girls, which I won't go into now, but I will show you as and when I start it. And so she dyed up some skeins of DK for me and she sent them because shipping from the USA to England is phenomenally expensive. Well, it is to us Brits anyway. <laughs> um, um, she, we worked out a way where she could send it um, slightly less expensively. So basically she got a seagull and tied the package to the seagull's legs and just sent it. No, she didn't. <laughs> I, 
you know what? I probably shouldn't say that, should I? I'm going to have all people getting up in arms now. No, you're not. You know I was joking, don't you? I mean, that said, carrier pigeons used to carry little messages. Not sweaters quantity of yarn, though. So, you know. Um, she has sent it to me anyway. And I got the exciting news when I was tracking it because it's been between somewhere between here and there uh, for about three weeks, I think. Um, it has arrived in the UK. Yes! So that means I do have to get a woolly on with that sweater because my candy shop yarn sweater is going to be coming very soon, hopefully. Again, that said, I'm waiting for so many parcels at the moment and every day I run to the letterbox. No. This morning I was waiting, honestly, including Christmas gifts and things, I must have been waiting for oh, at least half a dozen things. We got a catalogue for a company that we don't even shop with. It was a catalogue and that was it. I felt like opening the door and throwing it back in my post. <laughs> I don't want that, bring me on. I don't because my postman's lovely. I think I've told you I'm knitting my postman a hat. This is going to be what his hat is made of and I'm knitting him a hat for Christmas. There you go. Um, right, excuse me. So we've done knitting a bit there. Let me look at my let me look at my notes because you know you'll get a better thing. Oh, helical knitting. That's right. That's what we were knit, knitting about, talking about. Okay, a couple more finished objects, and then some general chatter. Do you remember? Uh, oh, do you remember this little guy? Do you remember him? I made him as a prototype a few weeks ago. My first ever Tompty or Tompter gnome or um, Scandinavian Santa Claus. So I made him, he was my prototype. So this week I upscaled a bit. And Face the right way. There you go. Uh, if I go, no, if he goes, there you go. Look how big his hat is. Look. I put bells on his hat. And there's, can you see the sparkle, the glitter sparkle on his hat? There. It's not sparkling. And there he is. I am so pleased with him. There's a few bits I would do differently next time. I put some white felt around the brim of his hat, but actually I would rather have had some roving or something a bit fluffy there, but still, that's okay. Um, and Gary has said he would prefer it if this wasn't decorated, if this was a plain fabric. He didn't get to vote. And what was the other thing I thought of? No, I think that was it. And again, in this one, oh my days, I put um, in the bottom half of this, you stuff it with, um, you know, acrylic toy stuffing or whatever. But I've also added, they say put a curtain weight in to give him some, some weight. I actually put um, a little mixture of rice and cloves and cinnamon. So the thing I've been making the fragrant sachets with, I put a wadge of that in the bottom as well and then topped it off with stuffing so that he smells rather Christmassy and beautifully fragrant, I have to say. So this is, this is mini. There you go. Very mini. And then, wow, the size of that. I just love that hat and if I do it to the side you'll see he's kind of he's kind of bent back it's meant to be bent back so so the pattern was from a Debbie Shaw book called Half Yard Christmas and it's all very um, very easy to make very straightforward I had um, these are locks um, they're not Wensleydale trying to think what they are, can't remember. 
so I use those locks but in the book she uses like a cord of rope or you could just use yarn strands or anything like that for hair. I want to make another one. I'm thinking of making a grey and cream one but plain this time. I'm not sure. But I've done it. I wanted to make a big one and I made one. So there you are. That was that. So we'll put a little one and big one back over there. Let's put those out of the way. Okay, so that's good. Now along the same lines, along crafting lines, now everything I show you at the moment, chances are it's going to be a Christmas gift for someone. Um, and I'm not going to say who who they're for, I'm just going to show you things I've made. And then it doesn't, doesn't matter, because if I didn't show you the stuff I've been making, then I wouldn't have anything to show you. And that'd be a pretty boring podcast. <laughs> I'd just sit here and go, yeah, I made loads of stuff. Okay, bye. That will be it. So the next thing, I am a big Tilda fan. Tilda's World, Tilda's Dolls. I love Tilda Fabric. A Tona Finanger is the name of the designer behind Tilda. Most of you, I'm sure, will have heard of her. And no, it's not rice, it's Tilda Dolls. <laughs> um, and in the past, I have made, I've actually made, um, I think, four Tilda dolls in the past. Every time I've made one, I've sworn never to make another one because they are so fiddly. But my friends who have them, I have to, I have got a photo album with some of the photos in them. Perhaps I'll share that with you next time. And I had a friend in mind who I wanted to make a gift for, who happens to be a knitter and a crafter as well. And I thought it would be really nice to make her a little sort of decorative ornament come pincushion come whatever for her workroom so I decided to make the Tilda mannequin oh there's someone outside my house that's a bit disturbing oh no they're waiting to cross the road that's okay um and it's in the Tilda I'm not sure to be honest I'll look at which book it's in I've got a few Tilda books um oh I've got each of those so this is what I made Isn't that cute? And then on the stand, uh, like that, I've glued some thread, some yarn, some needles, some pins rather, and some buttons. So that's all glued on. And then she's just got a couple of little glass beads. Actually, these are handmade glass beads by my sister that I had in my stash. This is a fabric that I bought a fat quarter of a while back but really liked it and I just thought it looked so pretty and then I topped it, I trimmed it with the lace there. So this would just stand on her desk and I glued some wool felt underneath. Go me! So I must tell you this block, this bit of wood here, I couldn't find a nice doll stand anywhere and they were all plastic and I really wanted wood. So called in the husband I said I need a doll stand can you make me one so we trundled down to his workshop his shed at the bottom of the garden and he cut me a piece of this beautiful wood I can't think I can't remember what it is and a bit of doweling there or dowel and I he um, you know sanded it and everything and then I coated it with an oil quite a few coats of oil, of a teak oil, and I put a teak oil on the dowel and we put them together and there you go. And I just think, I'm so thrilled with that, I'm so chuffed, I so enjoyed making it. And to me, this bit here just makes it perfect. And the best bit is I didn't have to do legs or arms. <laughs> it's the legs or arms on the Tilda dolls are so skinny and thin to turn through, it's a bit of a nightmare, whereas this was just the body. <laughs> but anyway, that took me quite a lot of time on Sunday. Now, there is a nice gentleman coming to my door. I can see him at the corner of my eye with one of my deliveries. Yay! So it may well be that we have a lot of dogs barking. You'll have to excuse me just a moment. 
Okay, so regroup. We're good. And actually, I took the opportunity to get the Tilda book to show you where I got the pattern from. It's that one. So sunny home style. And it's got loads of lovely patterns in it. It's got the dolls, it's got the Tilda animals. Um, Henry's at the door now. That's because I got up. No, he's gone away. We're okay. I mean, it's such a beautiful book. And this is a picture of the, the mannequin. Nah, I didn't put the wings on it. Um, but all the patterns are in the back of this book as well. There's some really nice sewing projects in there. Um, really beautiful, a lovely aesthetic if you like that sort of thing. I've just seen another finished object on the floor that I forgot about. Okay, we'll do that in a mo. But I also brought in... Now, this little girl is very old, but... Oh, can hear, I'm sorry, you can hear them in the background. There you go. Sorry, I was totally distracted there by them talking outside. So this is one of the Tilda dolls. Actually, if I uh, bring it back here, can you see? There, there. You can see how lanky her legs are. She's very old, she's very faded because she sits in the window. Um, I say very old, you know, she must be about eight, nine years old. But they are so cute and they don't have mouths, so you don't have to worry about that. They just have little eyes. And then I gave her little braided hair and she's got a pin of four on. And then, um, oh look, look how much she's faded. Look at that, wow. So this was the very first Tilda doll that I made. She's got little um, bloomers, is the word. So anyway, when I say Tilda doll, that's what I mean. Right, okay, so, just wait a bit, there you go. He's out there, he's gonna sabotage it again, isn't he? No, it just means that I have to um, hurry up. And again, I apologise, somebody's using the bathroom out there and I can now hear the, the flushing of the toilet. So if you can hear that, I'm so sorry. Keeping it real, babe, that's what we're all about. If you remember last week, I was making the Eileen bag, the market bag, out of some linen that I'd had in my stash. Again, another gift. And I finished it this morning. So I threw it in the washing machine because it needed blocking it because when linen stuff like that as it's when it's first made obviously it doesn't look very much if you remember last week it was all um scrunched up and i've got it's still wet but i've got a towel in it um to stretch it out to help block it so if i go back here this is my eileen bag my market bag oh there's a bit of fluff in there thank you very much hazard of this house so it looks quite uneven, obviously, with the towel in it. What I can do, actually, is take that out. And stick that up. No, because then you'll be having to look at a towel, won't you, all the time? Right, here we go. That's better. And that is blocked out really nicely. And actually, it's got loads more stretch in it. Um, so you've got the the stockinette base, it's, it's a bit damp, so, it's, so you've got that middle bit, that middle stockinette base, oh come on woman, there. Then you've got this lovely holy pattern and then because I explained last week, I knew I wouldn't have enough linen to do the whole thing in one skein because it takes just over one skein, I changed colour on the ribbed uh, brim of the bag and then did the strap in the set so it's sort of a ballet pink and then a salmon pink it's so pretty I love this I'm so pleased with it and the handle because it's a much better strap than the one I made before from a different pattern it's really quite thick it's done in rib um, 
and she doesn't tell you how long to make it she just says knit until you've got 36 inches of yarn left but I had a look on some of the Ravelry project pages and most of them seem to knit around about 16 inches length so if you're putting that then over your shoulder you can see that's quite I mean that will give and that will stretch a bit as well over time the one I've got it's really stretched it's too long and it, it flops around down by my um, yeah my hips but this one is a really nice uh, thing so yeah so that's the Eileen bag it's a free pattern and I believe I brought the I did I did, I'll put it in, there it is. Okay, it's by Hannah Ingalls. That's what I wanted to tell you. The Eileen bag by Hannah Ingalls. It's on Ravelry, or you can look on her blog. I think actually you can link it from her blog. And you can obviously knit it in any weight yarn, just adjust your needles a little bit. I use very thin, almost lace weight linen Lithuanian linen, which I then held double. It was a cracker. Fancy me forgetting to show you that. So that's another gift ticked off my gift list. Put that there for now. Okay. Right. Uh, we did that. We did that. I wanted to show you a couple of future makes that I've got planned. And then uh, talk about my Christmas journal. So, Future Makes, I did buy a new book this week. Um, many of you, I'm sure, will know or have heard of Mandy Shaw. That's S-H-A-W, as opposed to Debbie Shaw, S-H-O-R-E, who did the pattern for the Santa gnomes. Uh, Mandy Shaw is Dandelion Designs on Instagram, and she has her own website. And she designs all hand-stitched bits and bobs. They're just beautiful. I have a couple of her books. I found out a couple of years ago as well, having made some things from her books, that she actually only lives up the road from here. But I haven't, I've not met her. Um, but I know a friend's daughter who works for her. Um, anyway, she makes the most adorable, and she, oh, the Christmas stuff she's got going on is just beautiful and I wanted to make, I don't know if I told you last week, I really wanted to make some felted or some felt gingerbread men and some snowmen and do some, maybe some garlands or something like that and when I saw this on her Instagram feed it was pff, no brainer, I mean look at that, the pattern doesn't show on there so you're okay, how gorgeous is that and that is in this book, which has got a funny, I think I might have spills. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, there you go. How to Make Christmas Wreaths and Garlands by Mandy Shaw. Look at this, uh, this Santa. So basically, oh, look on the back, the gingerbread garland. These are so simple. They are so simple to make. So throughout the book, she shows you a selection of different garlands that you can, uh, different wreaths that you can make or garlands. So there's this one. The birds, I won't show you them all, I'll just show you my favourites. Um, it's all um, this one with the snowmen. They're so cute. I want to make them all. I want to have a wreath on every bit of wool and then, oh, this cone, this candy cone of treats, look. And then the Christmas mayhem, which is where everything is on it. And then basically at the back of the book, it's got all the templates and how to stitch them. And like I say, they are all really, really straightforward. So I'm very excited about making some of these. I need to get some felt. And of course, I'm going to have to order it online because I can't go to my local craft shop now. Um, but that is for sure. And actually, Mandy Shaw has lots of other lovely books. I ended up, I didn't get this directly from her website. I did buy it on Amazon, I have to say, because I wanted it quickly. <laughs> 
but really highly recommend. So that is going to be in my future. Whether it'll be next week, whether it'll be a couple of weeks, I don't know. The other thing I saw yesterday, and again, I blame Lucy Locketland, who is on Instagram and has a lovely shop in Sunderland, I believe. Um, she has oh, a beautiful shop. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, mm, I've got to fold this because this was a paid for pattern. And do you know what? I printed both, both sides of this page and I've just realised it hasn't printed them both out. But I saw this come up on Instagram last night and I found the pattern and it was really cheap for a you know for an indie pattern uh, I bought it off Etsy and I thought I'm gonna have to do it look crochet fairy lights I mean how awesome is that my cousin well Gary's cousin last year when we visited at Christmas she was making some she was knitting them but these are crochet and they are just amazing so I just thought you know what I'm going to make those. I've got cotton yarn. You don't have to use cotton yarn, but I've got quite a lot of cotton yarn that I've used for tea towels. So I want to make some crochet gar uh, fairy lights. So watch this space. The pattern, see, if I'd had it, if it had all printed out, I would have been able to tell you, but it clearly hasn't. So if you go on to Etsy, if you're interested in this pattern, and type in crochet fairy lights. Uh, oh, it's um, something mayhem, Mayfield mayhem, I think it might be. I will look it up and I'll put the link down below. And you purchase the pattern through her Etsy shop or through their Etsy shop. They've got lots of little cute patterns actually. And um, you can download it straight away then. But I think the crochet fairy lights are just beautiful. Actually, I'd quite like to hang a garland in here. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? So, gingerbread men and crochet fairy lights. That's my plan. Talking of plans, very smooth segue into that. I have put some of these pictures up, or pictures of this up on um, Instagram. I have made myself a Christmas journal or a Christmas project, a Christmas planner. So this isn't for my um, crafting. This is a planner for the Christmas season. It's for decorations, for menus, for gift giving, for addresses, for notes, for all of that. I just wanted it all in one place and I was looking at the various ones you can buy. A couple of years ago I had a Kath Kidston one but A, I've lost it. <laughs> just really annoying because I had all my Christmas card addresses in there. It'll be somewhere, I'll find it. And B, it was very, you know, generic and I thought, do you know what? I'm perfectly capable of making my own. Um, and so I did. And this is it. There you go. Christmas 2020. So this is stuck on. So I can take this off and reuse the cover for next year. Oh, I can see the bow. I've got gingerbread men, of course. I decided to put four rings through it. This is slightly um, wadded. I did put some wadding in. There you go. And then my most recent thing is I've added... Oh, these have slipped down a bit because they're quite loose. I've added my own little index cards there. And it's the same on the back, the back cover. And then on the inside, I covered, just covered it with some red card so you don't see all the gluey mess, because there's a lot of gluey mess. So this is my Christmas planner. Then I went on to, oh, praise God for Pinterest, eh? Um, on Pinterest, I found a lot of people had their own Christmas planners or PDFs and if you follow some of the links you can go to their blogs and you can download them for free which is wonderful. Um, so I followed one of the links and again I'm sorry I can't remember whose this was. Um, I will try and remind myself to look it up um, and put it below if you're interested. And these come, they're all PDFs and they're on a4 sheets so what I did is I shrunk mine down and put two to a page so that's the opening thing it's got all these little penguins and first of all I can't really show you too much because it's got my personal stuff on it is that any no there's nothing personal so you've got I've got a November and a December planner 
and then we've got a page for holiday traditions. Um, so I have started filling this out now. Then there's a whole um, section on, sorry my dividers are getting in my way now, gift ideas. So you can jot down gift ideas for people there and then there is also a big, uh -huh, I'm going to show you that one because I know that person watches, there's just a page there for gift giving so you can write down gifts that you're giving, um, there's a budget tracker, then you get a general, I've got this under my home section, so again I've just put these red cardboard dividers in, and so which is why they're a bit full about it, I didn't want to waste entire sheets of card making big things, because I was tight. <laughs> You've got a to-do list there. Um, what else have we got? Event planning, holiday shopping list, so things like I've got on here my advent candle, Christmas cards, batteries, cellar tape, all of that sort of biz. Then there's the, what I call, my feast, my baking section. And I've got, you've got things to bake. So, you know, these don't all have to be filled out to the nth degree, but it's nice to have them there, or things to make as opposed to things to bake. And then you've got a menu planner. And then, where are we? You've got, then you've got a page for the Christmas Eve menu, and you've got one for Christmas Day menu as well. And then what I did is I chopped up just some blank pages, and I've just popped those in the back. Um, and this now sits out on my counter and when I, I have filled out a lot of the gift sections, so no peeking Hannah if you're watching, um, this will sit on my counter and as I need to add things or if I get a sudden idea or wave of inspiration or um, I think of something I need to order for, I don't know, Boxing Day supper, then I just jot it down on here and I know that everything's in there. I've also, that's right because I did this yesterday I've cut up one of those and we've got loads of these knocking around because you know with with the um, business and everything but one of these plastic wallets this was a4 but I've cut it down to a5 to fit into my binder so now I can put receipts or just reminders or notes in there that I can't punch to put in the the rest so yeah that is my Christmas 2020. So I'm really pleased. I do, you know, making them is so much fun. Um, I probably, I did have a bit of a mishap with the glue on this one, which is, it's, you know, it's rustic. That's what I like to say. Um, I over glued it and then when I dried it, the pages all curled. So I had to put them under big books for a couple of days, but we got there. And of course the obligatory gingham because gingham it's just Christmas gingham is so many things and these little these little gingerbread people I'd picked up from our local craft store last time I was there because I thought they might be useful for Christmas gifts and things so so that is my Christmas journal so it's all very exciting and yes I am very into planning for Christmas I love it I want to make this like the best Christmas ever. That's my plan. For us, anyway. Hopefully some of you will do that too. I really want to embrace it and seek out the good and the excitement and the joy and the handmadeness of it all. Oh, I'm feeling quite emotional now. Right. Okay. I do believe. Oh no, I had a whole nother section. What is the time? How long have I been? Hmm. I was going to just talk you quickly through making these felt balls because I had a couple of people ask me how you make them. And I could refer you, there probably are tutorials and websites, but it's very easy and I was going to show you very quickly. So I think what I'll do is I will say goodbye to most of you or goodbye to those of you who don't want to watch how to make the um, 
the felted balls. These are the ones that you can use in your tumble dryer to decrease drying time. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is hang them on a Christmas tree. And I'm going to have loads of these hanging off the tree. A special little tree that I bought. So if you'd like to stay around to watch that, I will go straight on and briefly, probably five minutes, ten minutes, show you how to do that or how I did it. Um, otherwise, I would like to wish you all a happy week. I hope you are all keeping well in spite of the madness of this world or maybe because of the madness of this world. It's making us all determined to see the good in things and to, to enjoy the moments. I can't help it. I have to add a little thing like that because it's important, isn't it? Uh, as, as I mentioned last week, I know some of you are already getting ready for our Christmas Carol read-along, which starts... Uh, oh, I did sort of... Look at this. I can look in my planner. Wee, am I feeling smug now? I probably haven't written it down. Uh, start the Dickens read-along. Here we go. It's going to be on the 26th of November. That's when we are going to officially kick it off. Um, because that is a few days before the first Sunday of Advent and obviously um, the following week, if we left it to the following Thursday, we'd be pushing it a bit to comfortably read it all together, you know. So 26th of February, no. <laughs> we will not be starting this on the 26th of February. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what happened there. 26th of December. Oh, for goodness sake, the 26th of November, we will be starting the Charles Dickens A Christmas Carol read-along. And I know that Karen put a link on last week's podcast to um, a downloadable audio. I think it was an interview or a discussion about Christmas Carol, which I'm going to listen to. Um, so look out for that. Um and also we have discovered that you can indeed download it for free on Kindle if you have a Kindle and it is available on Audible as well if you'd rather read it along, uh, listen to it along with us. So yes, if you want to join in reading this amazingly wonderful seasonal book and, and feel very smug because you're reading Charles Dickens, <laughs> um, then get ready for that to join us um, on that. I'll also be doing, I'll talk a bit more about the Advent scriptural projects that I'm sort of throwing around in my mind at the moment, um, which I'm going to do through Instagram. So yes, as I said, have a great week. Uh, ta -da for now. Uh, keep cheerful. And I will see you next time, hopefully. For those of you who are staying, I'm just going to briefly run through then about how to make the felted balls. So... As you can see from these, I mean, they're all different sizes. These are perfectly imperfect, as I like to call them. So I have got a white one, I've got a black one, I've got the... So first of all, I use roving. You can use non-superwash yarn to make these. But as I said last week, as a, a spinner and a weaver, I have a lot of roving, so I was able to use that. Now roving, you can buy. It's cheap as chips, it really is. You can either go on to World of Wool and have a look on there if you're in the UK. Um, I'll put the link below for that. Um, or you can buy hand-dyed roving from Etsy. There's a lot of Etsy suppliers and these are probably, you're looking at, I'm pretty sure these are about two or three pounds. And you'd actually, you could just, you could felt that as it is. But what I do is, um, you know what, I should unroll this and it's wrapped. That's a wrap. So that's that's what it comes like. And then so this is this is combed or carded sheep's wool. And this is merino. You don't have to use merino, but this is what I had. So that's how much you get for, I don't know, a couple of pounds, I suppose. You can get a mixed colours bag as well, certainly on World of Wool, but I'll put the link down below. So I'm going to just show you with this green one because I've got more of this green. And when you pull apart roving, 
it's a bit like singles, yarn singles, if you think there's no twist in there, so there's nothing holding it together. Twist is like the glue that holds all the yarn fibres together. So if you twist it, which is why we spin, because it makes it sturdy enough to knit with. If it was just all the, all the fibres laid next to each other, you can just pull it apart. There you go. There's a little spinning preamp for you there as well. So, what I do to make these, I take slivers, I actually take quite long slivers, this is quite a small one, and then I just roll it up into like a cigarette. But the idea is ultimately you make a ball. So I'm kind of, it doesn't have to be super perfect. I pull out the roving to make it a little bit wider just to smooth out some edges. And then you just keep turning, a bit like you're hand winding a ball of yarn. Just keep turning like that. Now this isn't a proper tutorial, obviously. That's coming up as yellow, isn't it? This is a really nice green. And you just keep sort of building up. And it will look all wonky and all weird. And you keep going. Now this is going to shrink by probably at least 20%. So if you want big baubles, you need to, to make this quite big. If you want little ones, a bit like if you remember the acorns I made, you, you know, go small. But obviously the aim of this is to shrink them or to felt them. So when you've made that as big as you like, so can you see it's not, it's just very rough and ready. It's something you could put, put a podcast on and do. Then you get an old pair of tights or pop socks, or if they're in the US, pantyhose, I believe it's called. And you put your ball, look how much that stretches. <laughs> so you put it right in, in the bottom, make sure it's in there, and then Tie around there, tie that quite tightly with some, best some cotton yarn or some string. So do a couple of knots there. And then what you can do is you can keep putting balls in here and here. So let's say it's, oh, that's sort one of thing. Let me find a ball of yarn. There you are. Let's say you'd made a ball this big. You would then tie that one off. You would put that one in right down next to it twist the top and tie it. So you'd end up with a whole load, I think I might have put a picture on my Instagram highlights, uh, my Instagram stories, but basically you would end up with a whole load of balls, sorry, I can't get that, in your leg. I mean, this is just a pop sock and you could probably get half a dozen or more felted balls in there. Once you've done that, tie the top nice and firmly and throw this in your washing machine. You obviously have to put the washing machine on, you've got that. <laughs> I put it in with a wash load when I was washing towels. The more bulky, sort of rough and ready um, items, the better, because you want that to be agitated um, and bashed about with heavy objects because that's what causes the felting. Um, so you throw it in there um, and then when you get it out, once it's gone through the wash, you can get it out. Now, to start with, I used to snip the string. I used to try and untie the string so that I could use this again. But it is quite tricky because part of your felted ball may well sort of grip the inside of the stocking foot and you have to really pull it off and it might rip it a little bit. So, but these are, you know, these are so cheap, these. So I ended up, well, I used old ones actually that I'm just not going to use. So, um, and then you just peel them out, let them dry. You can reshape them. So what I did when they came out and they were wet, I kind of really worked them into as near a ball shape as I could. Obviously when I did the acorns, I made those sort of molded them into slightly more acorny shapes. And then you end up with your beautiful ball, a uh, beautiful bowl of felted balls. And that's it. If you were using non-superwash wool or yarn of some sort, wind it as if you'd wind a hand wound ball of yarn, make it as big or as small as you want. Um, do the same thing. Stick it into a pair of tights or a foot or something like that, tie it, throw that into the washing machine 
and then when it comes out you will have your balls and you can either use them as dry balls. I think the podcast I watched she used about five or six bigger ones, she made much bigger ones and what they do is they, they soak up the excess uh, moisture so um, tells your dryer it's finished sooner rather than leaving that in the clothes. Um, whereas I, um, I'm not doing that, I'm using those decorations. When I century her acorns, I did add a little bit of cinnamon and orange essential oil onto them. So you could do that on these as well. You could even, I mean, you, quite honestly, you could make snowmen. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. I really like that idea. Look, you could have a snowman. You could stick some felt eyes on there. Some little buttons. You could put some little um, cocktail sticks or something. There's no, so many things you could do with these. They would be fabulous. I might have to make another few boys. Oh, I've got, yeah, you see, I think I'd need a smaller head, wouldn't I, for that? But anyhow, that's how you do. That's how I made the felted balls. So I hope that's helpful to those of you who are interested. I'm going to say cheerio now, partly because it's time for a cup of tea and partly because honey is starting to snore in the chair. In the chair. So I will love you and leave you. If you've got any questions, do um, ping me a message on Instagram or on YouTube down below um, or if you want to reach out on the Ravelry group um, there's always those options so any questions you've got about anything I've shown you if I can be of any help then do contact me uh, in the meantime have a lovely week ahead and I will see you next week <laughs>